As we build up to the Monza weekend, I want to talk about one team in particular. Williams, this time around, as we head to the Monza Grand Prix, look really, really competitive. We can take a step back and look at last year, obviously. We had Nick DeVries stepping into the car, managing to get a ninth place finish in that Williams. Two points for the team, and they went absolutely wild. It was one of the best things for Williams that entire year, and it was two of their eight points they managed to get all season. Jump forward to this year. We go to the Netherlands Grand Prix last weekend. Alex Al Albon finished in eighth place. He got four points for the team, so double what Nick DeVries managed to get for the team last year. And they were gutted. They were annoyed. They were heartbroken. They thought they could have got more. They wanted Alex Albon to be fighting for the podium positions. They were really frustrated with an eighth place finish. And it just goes to show how far they have come in just one year. And that's what I want to talk about first and foremost. The fact that they've been able to jump this far forward in just one season. Obviously, on the surface level of it, the biggest change to us as fans has been the team principal. James Vowles has come in as their team principal this year and has completely changed the team. And of, of course, the foundations were still there. I still feel like the Williams setup, they still had a really positive outlook as a team moving forward. But I feel like James Fowler has been able to get even more out of the already excellent team that Williams had at their disposal. He's talked about it quite a lot, actually coming from the no blame culture at Mercedes and implementing an atmosphere that is similar at Williams was one of the main things he wanted to do in his first stint as team principal, sort of that first half of the season before the summer break. We said within the organization, there are 800 people. You have to form a connection with 800 people because everyone has to point in the right way, in the right direction. He wants to get the best out of every single individual and he wants to make sure that that relationship building, understanding what it makes for every single person to be driven on the direction of travel, taking them to an open, honest method, which is my way of doing things. And I like that from James Fowles. You know, he's come in, he knows that he can't just change the car, change every single system that they've got in place, but he can get the absolute best out of every single person in the garage. And he speaks so well that he's already already at this point, and I know that he's only been there like six months or so, he's already one of my favorite team principals on the grid. I just think he's going to drag that Williams team to better and better places as they move forward. And then the team itself has been so positive about James too. Not they've been positive about the knowledge that he's brought from the Mercedes team, but I think it's also the experience right at the top level that he's been able to bring to this Williams team. And now they're just going to put that into action. In the short term, the atmosphere is new, it's refreshed, they're ready to move forward. And in the long term, He's got all of that experience. He's got the know-how and that experience with Mercedes will be the thing that I think is the linchpin of Williams moving forward. It's helped by some on-track results, of course, obviously when Alex Albon is picking up points or when Logan Sargent's getting through to Q3 for the first time, that does help the morale of the team as well. But I think it's a spiral, right? You have James Vowles coming in with his positivity, then they get a result. That means there's more positivity. They get another result and you just get this sort of transitional phase where you end up up being positive all of the time because you're getting the results and that means you're more positive and that means more results and it's similar to what we're seeing with Max Verstappen at Red Bull. I know that's a big jump to make there right at the top of the constructor standings but if you look at it right now the Red Bull team and Max Verstappen in particular they're just so positive every single weekend and it feels like they can't get anything wrong and that's because that comes from the fact that they're winning every single weekend, so they can just build on the wins every single time. And it feels like James Fowles is doing the same with Williams. He's building on those little wins every single time. And the main person who's getting those wins for the team is Alex Albon. He is one of the best performers on the grid right now. I think we have to state that Alex Albon is probably in the top five drivers so far this season. I know that he's only 13th in the constructor standings right now, but he doesn't look like he's going to be caught in 13th. We've got Nico Hulkenberg just behind in the Haas. There's no way that that Haas is going to pick up up any more points this season they look absolutely dead and buried and I think that Alex Albon has basically guaranteed himself that 13th place finish in the driver's standings and also therefore Williams getting seventh place in the constructors too which if you'd have offered that them offered that to them at the beginning of the year I think they'd have absolutely snapped your hand off and then Alex Albon himself I think to delve deeper into the driver that he has become, we've seen over the last year that he has become the real team leader at Williams. I think, you know, there's been talks of him being linked to Ferrari and Red Bull and Mercedes, possibly moving to Aston Martin as well. But I think what he's got at Williams is a real setup where he can be the one. I think if he goes to Ferrari, he's still second best to Charles Leclerc. If he goes back to Red Bull, he's still second best to Max Verstappen. Right now at Williams, he is the driver. And they've come out and said, 
that there is a new element of control and calmness from him. You feel it spreading through the garage and you've got the positivity and the drive from James Fowles alongside this cool, calm, collected nature where Alex Albon is delivering results, happy with the car, moving them in the right direction, getting it set up for himself and making sure that they get absolutely everything out of every single weekend. There was Q1 in Silverstone where the team pointed it out in particular. There was that red flag. Alex Albon was in last place at the time in qualifying. He wanted to make it through. He thought it was going to be a track where the Williams car could be competitive. And he remained calm. He wasn't put off by the fact that the red flag could have really cost him. He came back in. He asked the team to make a few setup changes. They made those changes. He went out and he performed. And I think that's the thing. If he'd have come in panicked, we see this a lot with Ferrari sometimes where the drivers come in, they're a little bit put out. You know, they can't quite control where they are right now and they're a little bit frustrated. Alex Albon just seems cool, calm, collected. He gets everything right every single time. And everything that is sort of putting together right now, he's picking up results and that positivity, as I said, spirals and he keeps getting more positive too. The team are getting more positive. Alex Albon's feeling more positive. And even last weekend, like the Williams FW45 should have been terrible last weekend in the Netherlands, but the car, the changes that they have made are making it more and more competitive. We know... At the beginning of the season, the car will struggle at most circuits and it will be fairly competitive at some. You know, we looked at Silverstone, Monza, Spa, for instance, uh, Azerbaijan, these sort of super high speed circuits. And we were like, OK, Williams will be competitive there, but they'll be kind of nowhere everywhere else. And they'll probably be the 10th fastest team everywhere else on the calendar and the layouts with those long straights and it, it was the fact that the Williams had a very defensive car. If you think of the best result Williams have had so far this season, it's that seventh place in Canada. And actually, Alex Albon qualified really well, started in ninth place, made a move up a couple of places. But actually, the whole race, he was fending off drivers from behind. And the Williams car has been seen as this really defensive car when it's come onto the track. But now, if you look back at last weekend in the Netherlands, as I said, that Williams car should have been absolutely awful. The Netherlands track is everything that the Williams car hates. It's tricky, it's windy, it's curvy, and everything about that Netherlands track should have led to Williams being the slowest car on the entire track. Alex Albon then puts the car fourth in qualifying, and the Williams car looks like it could be the third or fourth quickest car on track. That is a real step forward for the Williams team in terms of their car development too. So they've got James Fowles, they've got Alex Albon absolutely flying, and they've now got a Williams car that looks more competitive in lots of different circumstances, rather than just being competitive on those particular tracks. However, coming into this weekend at Monza 2023, is their real shot at like the best points haul of the season. Okay, the car is getting better and better on lots of different tracks. It's also still really good at these kind of tracks too. And Albon was absolutely gutted, obviously, to miss the race last year with that appendicitis. And the fact that Nick DeVries came in and got two points from that Williams car, I think coming into this year, Alex Albon is even more excited about what he can get from this Williams car. And I think the Monza track, the fact that they're going to be super competitive and really difficult to overtake because they're usually the fastest car in a straight line. And that's basically all that Monza is about. Albon could end up getting a podium for Williams. I'm going to throw it out there. I think Albon is a real good outside shout at a podium this weekend. And that would be their first podium since 2017 because nobody really counts the Russell podium from Spa 2021, do they? You know, I know he was on the podium. I know George Russell had the tears and everything, but he only actually raced for two laps and they were behind the safety car. So I don't know if we can really count it. I think that this is going to be the first Williams podium, competitive podium, where Alex Albon really does get the best out of that Williams car. So I'd love to know what you think, though. Williams racing, how they're doing so far this season, how they're moving forward so incredibly quickly. James Valves, Alex Albon, the car itself, the combination of those three all coming together. And then I hope that Logan Sargent can also add a little bit of spice to that as well and maybe become a little bit more competitive. Maybe this is the chance for him to get his first points haul of the season. Obviously, the only driver to have taken part in every single Grand Prix so far this year and still be on zero points. So come on, Alex. Come on, Logan. This is your weekend. I'd love to know what you think, though, in the in the comments down below. Can Williams get a podium? And also, if you want to know some more predictions from me about this weekend, I made this video here. So click that link and I'll see you over there.